Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about diagnosis in clinical psychology. Turn on your captions if you have any trouble following along and let's get started. So we have already looked at the idea of assessment in our previous video. Diagnosis means to determine whether the result of assessment point towards a specific mental disorder outlined in a classification system. Be warned though, not every time a diagnosis is performed means that a treatment has to be sought. We only seek treatment when the disorder interferes with the patient's daily functioning. Besides, sometimes a patient need not meet the diagnostic criteria of a disorder or any disorder for that matter and yet require We start in a couple of minutes when we talk about provisional diagnosis. Also, to clarify, even though American Psychiatric Association is yet to clarify this issue properly, we generally assume that a syndrome is a group of symptoms which specify a particular disease. Whereas, a disorder is the loss of proper functioning. In a sense, syndromes are the outward expression of disorder, but not always. Some disorders have weird symptoms. If one were to study only these symptoms, they would not arrive at the disorder. Thus, such symptoms cannot be said to characterize a disorder because the disorder itself has not been documented well enough. Classification systems such as DSM-5 and ICD-10 ensure that mental health professionals are on the same page. They keep the field of clinical psychology as standardized as possible, with proper diagnostic criteria that needs to be met for a particular disorder to be present. The DSM-5 is maintained by the American Psychiatric Association, whereas ICD-10 is maintained by World Health Organization. Please note that these manuals are a work in process and are constantly being updated even after their publication. The number following their name signifies their edition. In fact, ICD-11 came out as late as 2019 itself, but is not as famous as ICD-10. Let's have a look at these manuals. The Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders or DSM is published by American Psychiatric Association, not Psychological Association. It was started in 1944 as statistical classification of institutionalized mental patients and was meant to improve communication between various doctors regarding the disorders of the patients kept in mental asylums. Post World War II, the manuals underwent great revisions and we arrived at DSM-5 in 2013. The APA Committee of Nomenclature and Statistics developed a variant of the ICD-6 that was published in 1952 and called it the first edition of DSM. We will look at ICD in a minute. It is again important to note that these disorders are not definite in any sense and the work is still going on. There are entire conditions which have been listed for further research within the DSM-5 itself. There are a few lines you ought to know while making use of DSM-5. There is a diagnostic criteria which is basically a set of symptoms which need to be met by the patient within a time span for the diagnosis of a disorder. One cannot be labeled clinically depressed simply because they felt sad two times within a month. Then we have subtypes and specifiers. The goal of both of these is to include multiple variants of a particular disorder and to improve communication between mental health professionals by increasing the specificity. Subtypes are mutually exclusive and jointly or collectively exhaustive. That means in the presence of multiple subtypes available for a particular disorder, a patient has to have one of them and only one of them. So for example, if there is a mental disorder named the Holy Plague, don't look that up, I made that up and it has multiple subtypes, then a person suffering from the holy plague can only have one subtype and must have a subtype. Now, specifiers are different. They don't have to be mutually exclusive or jointly exhaustive. Sometimes they are though. They usually point out the course, severity or descriptive features. For example, the idea that a condition is worsening or getting better over time is the course, the idea that the condition is severe as of now is the severity and the idea that this condition was diagnosed in a controlled environment is a descriptive feature. A patient can have multiple specifiers, unlike subtypes. Generally, in DSM, the options of subtypes are preceded by specify whether and the options of specifiers are preceded by specify or specify if. Then we have a principal diagnosis, which is our main diagnosis in the presence of others. We give treatment on the basis of principal diagnosis. In case the complete criteria has not been met, then we resort to the provisional diagnosis. We do that when we are sure that in the near future, the diagnostic criteria will be met. Now let's have a brief overview of the ICD-10 itself. International Statistical Classification of Diseases and Related Health Problems or ICD is published by World Health Organization or WHO. It started off in 1893 when the International Statistical Institute adopted the International List of Causes and Death. In 1948, WHO was handed the responsibility to develop ICD's 6th edition in the post-World War II era 
and it has been with the organization ever since. It was ICT-6 from which the DSM developed its own first edition. WHO came up with ICT-10 in 1990 and it has been extensively used across the globe for medical research. A big difference between DSM and ICD is that ICD includes all clinically diagnosable diseases and not just mental problems. In fact, mental illness simply takes up the fifth chapter of ICD-10. Another difference is the validity of these manuals. DSM is largely used within America whereas for standard international research, people use ICD for the sake of universality. As has been mentioned before, ICD-11 came out in 2019 itself. That's all for this one guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment and see you next Monday. Take care.